processing of these surplus vegetables during the growth periods. The farmer convergence provided an opportunity for sharing of experience and best practices in marketing of broilers. Presentations were made on small ruminant fattening, such as traditional methods of castration, which generated questions and answers. What then could be the key take-home message for the scores of farmers drawn from across the country? My speech centered on twofold. One was directed to the farmers. The farmers have to take ownership of the projects and they have to be very careful when they are selecting these sites. Normally, we are encountering problems. Farmers will come up with a site with all the necessary transactions. At the end, it falls in only one person's hand and eventually they themselves will come around and say, maybe this was not done in consultation with us, the farmers. I have called on them to, be on, to take ownership of the projects. Secondly, most of the projects, the sites, like being it a garden site, a poultry site, or a small ruminant site, has to be looked after. We have to be very frank. One, to what we are doing in our various uh, enter enterprises. Two, we have to be very frank to the project, to what the project is doing as what it's supposed to be doing. These two, thing, uh, two things, they have to match. After interactive sessions during the third annual consultative farmers platform convened by the Livestock and Horticulture Development Project, participants will disperse with renewed resolutions anchored on the objectives of the project designed to improve the lots of farmers. Uminjai, GRTS. A play by the Pan-African Theater, a film production entitled In the Name of Love, Respect the African Woman, premiered recently at the Ebunja Theater Hall. Al Rahibite was among the audience and she reports the production sheds light on domestic violence and the pain the African woman endures in life. This play entitled In the Name of Love, Respect the African Woman was not only part of the quest to revitalize the culture of going to cinemas, appreciate and support the country's creative art industry, but also promoting African values. The display painted a true picture of Africa, contrary to the stereotypes many are used to believe. I'm anxious, sir. What is the good news? I was in the farm this afternoon. When to my surprise, I saw a friend, the chief's missing. This play, which captured the minds of many who were present at the event, also touched on the violence women go through from several stages of their lives. It is written by Isa Jalo, a Ceredonian based in the Gambia. She is said to have written several plays in the past. Among the plays she has in her repertoire, A Cry of the Country Virgin, which was released in 2009, Chains of Blood, Power of Love, Judgment of Love, Desperate Sacrifices, Abortion in 2013, The Big Jewel in 2013, Love Battle for Sacrifices, and Sierra Union Flowers Will Grow. These are the plays that she has written and in film, she was a guest artist in The Mirror Boy. She played a role in it. She acted in Living in Love, a TV series. As African drama is now a catalyst in the world, the Pan-African theater and film production are also on the drive to add their name, the country and Africa at large in the world's art industry. The play was launched with $10,000 by Minion Job. The Pan-African Theatre and Film Production Company aims to get rid of by Africa that shows the multitude of images of starving kids with flies on them. The company aims to empower youths, create jobs, provide a medium to display pure Gambian talents and help grow the economy. Though they are young, but those behind this development have used their ingenuity to come up with something that captivated the minds of many. Theatre is not just for entertainment, but education and, and, uh, 
and can contribute to social economic development. And this tells you that it is a serious business. Theater or any form of literature that does not speak for its own for its own times has no relevance. Theater must therefore address the critical needs, aspirations of people. We must use our theatrical skills to promote peace and development. After two hours of watching a play many describe as interesting, these were the remarks made by some members of the audience. With regards to my impressions, I think the play is one of the excellent um, talent of the Gambian young people that has been portrayed here. And the play here actually showcases um, the troubles the African woman goes through day in, day out. Um, and I wish that um, our um, African men will learn from this play and actually change the attitude, the approach towards our um, sisters. The, to the young Gambians, um, this is a um, clear manifestation that the talents are here and we can make it. We can make a difference. I think it is a very great initiative. I really enjoy the play. I'm really happy. They, I'm really happy they put this uh, play like this, you know, to show people, bring to light what happens to girls. She is forced into marriage, and this is what happened to her. Her whole life, she, she's suffering. I only wish they put that she went to school. You know, they did not put the educational part of it. I wish they did that. I'm sure next time they will. To show that if she was educated, if she went to school, she would have been independent and she would not have been de dependent on these men that abused her. And also her parents would not have had to take money and become dependent on the man too. The play didn't only advocate for the rights of girls and women, but also underlined the talent embedded in the country's youths. Rahibite. GRTS News. The Plague Come Society Gambia chapter recently played host to a four-day youth conference and festival that had youth and development as a theme. The cultural extravaganza that saw a rich display of Menjago culture attracted members of the society based in Senegal and Guinea-Bissau. Louis Mendy has more. Seizing a festive moment for Christians but some tribes at this moment usually accord themselves the opportunity to showcase what they believe is a long-standing rich cultural heritage. Despite changing times, culture is meant to be nurtured. <laughs> this is the scene of activities as members of the Plaklam Society, a local Mayako dialect in their traditional garments, stage a grand carnival attended by many from far and near, from Dhaka, Siganzor, and Bissau. An exhibition of the typical Manyako culture, one deeply rooted in their hearts and nurtured by their grandparents. The Manyakos hail from Guinea-Bissau. The event is celebrated every other year in different countries, drawing the attention of scores of spectators from within the sub-region. The fiesta is purely geared towards preserving indigenous cultures as well as showcasing some unique Manyako cultural aspects such as the traditional outfits, the pouring of libations usually done to invoke the spirit of the ancestors and other extraordinary practices usually carried out during rituals such as naming ceremonies, weddings and funeral rites. The purpose is all about um, bringing our culture to the doorstep of our own people and that is to say to also sensitize our young ones who are yet to know what is the culture of the Manjago. Because if you look at it, in most cases nowadays, we are acquiring other cultures which is not ours. And so it is good that to sensitize each other and try to learn to know where we come from, where we are, and where we're going. This show of Manjako culture depicts an extraordinary style meant to reminisce the customs embraced by their ancestors, a deep-rooted spiritual undertone which has been preserved for centuries. In our ancient uh, time, our grand-grandparents, that is the, 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 the that's cultural thing. 
Now, sometimes we pour the uh, libation. So that talk not actually is not uh, some evil thing, but we are praying for peace. We are praying for evil things to be far away from uh, whatever. For example, during funeral rites and anniversaries of their fallen families, Manjakos used objects to communicate with the deceased, asking him or her the cause of his or her death and what the future holds for the remaining members of the family. This is done 